I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about web typography, CSS3 patterns, and simple icons. Let's check it out. First up is Typeplate. This is basically a typographic starter kit or a SAS mix-in that you can go ahead and include in your website. Now, I, th I think it's worth noting, Nick, when you say SAS mix-in, you mean the um, CSS framework SAS. Correct. Not, you know, a, a, a way of offering sassy comments into a normal show, right? You're really mixing in the SAS right now, but okay, thought, yes. I just thought we would clarify that. Thanks. Yes, so it, it's a SAS mix-in that allows you to basically set different typographic design patterns within your website. So if you're a developer and you have trouble setting your typographic scales, so for example, as you start to get down to smaller and smaller font sizes, you have to change the line height, this is definitely for you because it allows you to do that in a quantitative way rather than you know just kind of eyeballing it and guessing and wondering if something looks right. So this is a much faster way to go ahead and just implement those nice typographic styles without having to worry about it a whole lot. Yeah, I, as a developer, uh, I like that because I can just, you know, assign line height and font size to a variable and then modify that for the different sizes uh, in the CSS. As a designer, I like it because it means the developer can't go in and mess up your nice design. <laughs> We're all about compromise here on the Treehouse Show. Yes. <laughs> Next up, we have a blog post on HTML's new template tag. Now, this is a pretty awesome thing, and this is going to be mostly used for client-side JavaScript libraries. So there's a bunch of different JavaScript templating libraries that we have right now, and they all work a certain way to manipulate the DOM and let you have content in them. The new HTML5 template tag is going to be an actual tag called template. And this isn't going to exist in the DOM at all. So it's just going to kind of sit inside of your page, and then you can call it when you need to. This is something that's going to be more useful for um, template language authors to use um, to really speed up the site. Now, there are a lot of different properties that a template is going to have. So you call a template tag, you give it an ID, and then it sits there until you're ready to use it. Now, what's really, really nice about the template tag is since it's sitting in the DOM and not being used and it's actually invisible, you don't have any performance penalties while it's just sitting there. Now, this is something that's going to be very useful for the perception of speed. So there's not going to be any page reflows or anything like that while you're using the template tag. Anyway, there's a great tutorial on how to use this over at html5rocks.com, and you can find that link in the show notes at youtube.com slash gotreehouse. Very cool stuff. Next up is a CSS3 patterns gallery. Now, of course, you can go ahead and use images to generate nice patterns and textures on your websites and in your background images, but this is actually a way to do it with CSS. Now, if you scroll through here, you'll see a bunch of really cool looking patterns. There's, you know, this rainbow pattern here, upholstery, zigzags, arrows, etc. So if I go ahead and click on one of these, it will give you the CSS that will actually generate this pattern. Now again, this isn't using any images. This is all being built in pure CSS. Now what that means is that you'll get really fast load times because you're not loading in these images that need to repeat, you're not worrying about how they have to repeat across a background and if you, you know, are lining up the seams just right. And the other nice thing is that it's CSS, so it's all basically, you know, vector based and that means that you can scale up to these high DPI displays really nicely without worrying about any kind of jagged pixels. So, very cool stuff, definitely worth checking out. Jagged Pixels sounds like a great album name. I agree. For for a, a web. We're starting a band. Yeah, a web band. We, we mentioned that. Yeah. yeah. Jagged Pixels. First album. Coming look, this fall. Look for it. 
Next up, we have an article on SitePoint called The Beginner's Guide to JavaScript Dates and Times. This is a great walkthrough about learning how to use the date and times in JavaScript. And it even goes so far as talking about some of the new HTML5 date elements that you can attach to um, different inputs. Now, it goes through, shows you very simply how to create a new JavaScript date. And um, you can even do that with certain strings. So there's different options that you can give it, you know, getting the date, getting the full year, getting the month. And you can even go so far as programmatically setting the date uh, via a blank date object. So, they, you know, they walk through, they give a, a really nice walkthrough of just kind of getting started and an introduction to it. Once you get a little bit more advanced, I recommend using a library such as Moment.js. That's a really great one that handles formatting and abstractions for you, as well as the inconsistencies in different browsers. Very cool stuff. Yeah, so Nick, Paul Boag was in town, and I had a chance to interview him. Cool. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. I'm Jason Seifer. I'm here with the Treehouse Show, and we're doing an interview today with the one and only Paul Boag. Paul, thank you very much for being here today. You're welcome. Web design. Yes. Mobile. Oh, absolutely. Web development. Oh, no. Wow, Jason, thanks for asking the really hard-hitting questions. No problem. That was a really insightful interview. Next up is Gumby, which is yet another CSS framework. We talk about lots of CSS frameworks here on the show, but it's a very good one, so we should take a look. If we go ahead and scroll down here on the Gumby 2 website, you will see that it's using SAS, and SAS, of course, allows you to generate your CSS and gives you all sorts of nice functionality on top of that. It's a very flexible framework, meaning that it will work across a wide variety of screen resolutions. They tout it as being very simple. Of course, it should be. It's very robust. You get the idea. It's another CSS framework. It's a really good one. When choosing a CSS framework, you should definitely consult your doctor first. No, just kidding. <laughs> You should definitely try out different types of CSS frameworks to determine which one is the best for the project that you're working on, and also the one that matches your own personal preferences. Um, because there's so many different nuances there, and while one, two, or you know, ten different CSS frameworks might be the right one for a particular project, it might not be the right one for you exactly. or in a particular style. So. Um, if, you, if, if it takes more than four hours to implement a CSS framework, you might want to consider using a different one. Yeah. But, you know, basically, there's not a best CSS framework, so that's why we cover a whole bunch of them here on the show. And they're all useful. Very much so. Next up, we have a quick plugin called SBGZ. This is uh, a really great JavaScript plugin that will look for um, SVG images on your site, and if your browser does not support SVGs, it will roll back to a PNG version automatically. 
This is going to be good for older browsers. Uh, we're not going to name any names, but older browsers that don't have SVG support. Netscape. <laughs> yeah, Netscape, Mosaic, we're looking at you. Um, so yeah, very quick, there's a download on GitHub link, and you'll be able to find that in the show notes. Pretty cool. Next up is Simple Icons. As the name implies, it's a simple set of icons. These are all in PNG format in 11 sizes from 16 pixels all the way up to 4,096 pixels. So if you have to go ahead and create, say, a favicon for your website and you want to try to use one of these, that might be a, a good way to, to go. Or if you need to include one of these in, a, uh, in an IMAX feature film, they have the resolution that allows you to do that as well. So pretty cool stuff. And in, in all seriousness, this is a way for you to go ahead and include an icon at normal size and also include the same file uh, for retina resolutions. They get extra points for having the Treehouse logo in there. Boom. 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 So I think that's all we got for this episode. Nick, who are you on Twitter? I'm at Nick RP. And I am at Jay Cipher. For show notes and more about anything we talked about, check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash gotreehouse. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one where we talk about web design, web development, starting a business, and more, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. If you'd like to see more advanced videos and tutorials like this one, go to teamtreehouse.com and start learning for free.